Good morning, everybody, or afternoon or evening, depending on when you watch this. Um, grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. I was going to do another Issues of the Week video. Um, while I do that, I'm going to unbox a bunch of uh, switches that I just got in. So I'll probably uh, talk about that, too, as, as I go through this. Um, yeah, so, issues of the week. Uh, I had two, two in one day yesterday. Um, I'm on call. We have an on-call rotation of uh, three people. And uh, we rotate every three weeks. So I'm on one week. There are other guys on another week. And uh, my boss is on one week. So, uh, yesterday, about 6.15 in the morning... I get a call from the help desk saying all the phones in the second floor of our towers building is are out. Phones aren't working. So I tell them, okay, well I'll dial in and check on uh, check on the network status and and I'll get back to you just as soon as I figure out what's going on. So I connect with my Global Protect VPN and um, I look at the network and. Yeah, sure enough, all the switches in that part of the building are down. And they're they're all fed from one switch, which is also down. So I think, aha, you know what? I bet power's out in that closet. So I call the help desk back and say, um, go check power in that closet. I think the UPS is probably turned off. You know, they probably lost power and the UPS drained itself. Um, so go check check that and see if it looks okay. So he says, okay, it's going to take me about 20 minutes. So 20 minutes later, I get a I get a call back. He says, "Oh, the switch is up. All the lights are blinking, but the phones still aren't working." Well, shoot. So I get back on the VPN and I, I get into my core switch, and uh, I check the port that connects from the core to that switch that's down, and the interface is up up. Admin status is up. Operator status is up. So I try to ping the switch. Can't ping the switch. Well, shoot. <laughs> so, uh, so then I get up. I said, "All right." Well, I call him back. Said, "Look, I'm gonna have to come in and 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 uh, fix that." So, um, takes me about thirty minutes to drive to work. So I get to work, get up there, and sure enough, all the switches, all the lights are blinking, everything, but the uplink port is out. Uh, the uplink from that switch up to the other switches was working, you know. I got into the switch and ensure, yeah, it said that that port was down. It was a TG1.50, um, 10 gigabit slot 1, port 50. So TG150 was down. TG149 goes up to the other switch on the other floor. That was up. So I thought, you know what? I wonder if, um, I bet I know what's going on. I bet uh, this GBIC went bad. So I pulled the GBICs out and I swapped them, I plugged the cables back in. And uh, same thing, the GBIC downlink to my core was out, and the GBIC going up to the second floor was um, was working just fine. Okay, well I just swapped the GBICs, that didn't help. I started thinking, well maybe I gotta buy bad fiber patch cable. Um, so I tried reseating it, I cleaned the ends, I put it back in, nothing. So I, tr I um, I know that this particular fiber run goes through several patches, and so I, I texted my uh, my engineer and uh, asked him, "Hey, where where does this go? You know, how I need to check all the fiber patches." And uh, he says, uh, "Well, I, I can't remember. I'll, I'll come in and check on it. I'll be there in about an hour." <laughs> okay, well, I don't want to wait an hour. So what I did was. Um, Said, well, you know what? I'm gonna punt. I don't normally like to do this, but uh, but I'm just gonna fall back and punt. So I rebooted the switch, and lo and behold, when I came back up, all the interfaces were active, including the one TG150, which I had swapped GBICs on. It came back up. Phones started working again. Everybody was happy. So that's that's an odd problem. Um, I don't really like that that happened, but uh, and yet it happened. So, I'm putting a watch on that switch. I don't want to replace it just yet. Um, 
having to reboot it one time, that's 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 an anomaly. Um, if I have to reboot it again, I'm probably gonna look at swapping it out. It's one of the older legacy switches, and uh, pardon the noise. Um, it is basically one of these guys. When I talk about my legacy switches, this is what they are. We also call them black boxes. It's the old uh, Interesis uh, Secure Stack series. This is a C5 12548-2P and a 48, uh, sorry, 48P2. And 48P just means it's power over Ethernet. So that's the, uh, those are our legacy switches. And what we are moving to, and what I am unpacking today, are what we would lovingly refer to as the purple boxes. So this is the new, uh, this one's an X440. But uh, the switches that we're, we're buying now are X460 G2s. So that is what I'm unpacking today. And that was issue number one of that day. Um, so I closed that issue out, talked to all the people, everybody, everybody says everything's good. And uh, all the trauma nurses on the second floor were extremely pleased with me. They, they thanked me profusely. Um, the second problem wasn't really a problem, but I didn't want it to become a problem. Um, so as I was checking my network status to make sure everything was up and everything looked okay, um, I noticed that on one of my switches, oh, this is an X590 here, I noticed that on one of my switches, um, the, uh, we have two links connected together. Um, in the new world, it's called an MLT. Well, my new world, probably not your new world. You guys that have been doing this a while will know. Um, it's a multi-link trunk. Uh, we call them lags, aggregate links. Um, one of them was down from my uh, switch over here in the admin area. Uh, switch was still up. It wasn't impacting anybody, but I don't like having a link down. So, <laughs> um, obviously. So uh, I started troubleshooting that. I went over there. And um, the, I checked the port counters, and they were incrementing. We were sending, but we weren't receiving anything. So, huh, okay. So I checked the switch that it's connected to, which is down in my MDF. It's an older, uh, it's one of the cores that I'm going to migrate off of. Pardon the noise. Um, it's an S, S4. So... Basically speaks the same language as that switch I just showed you, but it's a very big modular switch. Um, four four uh, cards you can put into that one. Um, so uh, I go down there and I take a look at it, and everything looks okay. I check the uh, port status on the port that's connected up to that switch, and it says up, up. Well, that's the first giveaway right there. This is a lag aggregate link, so when I check the port, it should show dormant, dormant, dormant. Um, because that's the physical port is not controlling anything, it's the logical port, lag. So I would actually identify that as, in this particular case, it was lag.0.33. That's the port that we're actually managing and working with. And that showed up, up, um, because, you know, it was seeing a connection, so the lag was up, up, which is what I should see, but both ports should show dormant. So there's two ports that made that up. The, uh, one port showed both, you know, up, it showed dormant, dormant, and the other one showed up, up. So that's weird. Um, rather than spend a whole lot of time troubleshooting it, I said, you know what, I'm just going to swap out the NIC and see what happens. And I, or the GBIC, sorry. So I pulled the GBIC out, put a new GBIC in, hooked the fiber back up, and then boom. I see both ports on the lag, and uh, all, all statuses were dormant, dormant for both the, the port that was up and the port that was down. Replacing the GBIC fixed that problem. So there wasn't a whole lot of troubleshooting process. That was really a shotgun approach, but uh, it worked. So that was that, 
that were my uh, those are my two issues of the week. Um, so if that's all you came here for, you can you can go now. But otherwise, you can watch me put together this little uh, this switch here, which uh, I guess you really can't see all that well. Let me see if I can angle this camera a little better so that we can see the switch. There it is. So yeah, like I said, this is a uh, this is actually going to be a spare top of rack switch. I think I bought it as a spare. So this is an X590 G2, and uh, it's only got what, 24 ports. Yeah. So this is just basically a spare, but I'm going to put it together anyway and keep it on hand because you you never know. Um, we've actually got two of these in production in the, the rack over there that'll probably get, um, th these will probably get removed because uh, we're going to be using the, uh, VSP 7400 as our top of rack switch. So this is a, a fan module. Um, I don't know why they don't just come in the switch, but they don't, so... Anyway, see, fan number four, there you go, we'll put you in there. So there's the first fan module. I'm going to have to do a lot of cleanup with all these boxes. Get another fan module here, continue on. That's the thing about these extreme switches, some uh, partial assembly is required. Get through all these fan modules, and then we'll move to the power supplies. That's if you're interested. You can just click off the video if you're not. But uh, it's giving me something to do, you know. It's really smoky outside in California. Uh, we got wildfires all over the place in my part of the state, so uh, the sun isn't even shining right now. It's uh, really bad out there. The, uh, the uh, particulate, particulate matter count uh, above 75 is unhealthy. And uh, right now we're running at about 300, 300 parts per million, billion, whatever it is. Uh, it's, it's bad. Whatever it is, whatever it's supposed to be, it's not. It's way above that. So we had a uh, storm come through earlier in the week that uh, created a lot of lightning, but not a lot of rain. If you don't know much about California, um, basically we're a desert here, um, semi-arid desert. We do get, we do have a rainy season, but uh, we've. On and off, we're, we're mostly in a drought now. Luckily, we get a lot of snowfall, and that's where a lot of our water comes from. And then uh, my water actually comes from the ground, so I need rain to have nice, clean water. All right, we're almost done with all these fans here. I think this is the last fan module. And what do we got next? Power supply. We got redundant power supplies. Because I think all switches should have redundant power supplies. Even though that X440 I just showed you does not, it's more of an entry level switch. And uh, we told our supplier, um, we're not doing entry level here. This is a hospital. We need full redundancy. So, well, anyway, here's power supply. This one, this one's. A lot thinner than a lot of the other power supplies we use in our other switches. That guy in there, I like them because they're hot swappable. And uh, if I do need to move power from, from uh, one strip to the other, I can do that. We're moving things around in the data center. And last power supply, voila. These are not needed for this. These are stacking modules. Uh, yeah, this is a 
stacking module. It doesn't actually go on this. Side. I think it's just sitting here because I had nowhere else to put it. So anyway, there you go. There's a there's a fully populated switch. I don't know why they don't just ship them that way. Extreme partial assembly required. And uh, well, that's about it today. I've talked on long enough. That's 15 minutes of uh, talking about issues of the day, or issues of the week, and uh, also watching me put together a switch. Now I'm going to do inventory. We got a bunch of uh, cables in here, and I need to ent enter them into our inventory system. And uh, I also need to inventory this mess over here. Mm. Uh, it's uh, one of another yet another one of the unglamorous parts of the job. So I'll cut it here because watching me do inventory is going to be a lot like watching grass grow. So you guys uh, have a great week. God bless. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, click the subscribe button. And if you want to know when I update another video, hit the little notification bell. Um, but you don't have to. Just drop in when you want and say hey. So uh, thanks for all the comments, guys. I appreciate that, both both supportive and unsupportive. We're st still getting some Ubiquity fans out there. I'm not against Ubiquity. It was not my router. I have to keep saying it again and again and again. I did not own that router. There's nothing I could do with it. <laughs> so anyway... Uh that's it. We'll we'll catch you guys next time. God bless.